a train like no other, with a sleek aerodynamic design that resembles a Zeppelin, and the powerful roar of its engines reminiscent of an airplane, this remarkable machine was a true engineering marvel of its time, leaving an indelible mark on the history of transportation. In the 1920s, the prevailing opinion was that high speeds with trains required too much energy to ever be profitable. German engineers wanted to prove the opposite and began designing a revolutionary vehicle. It not only had to be faster than a traditional train, but also more profitable in the long term through energy savings. But what exactly is the Schienen Zeppelin? As early as 1919, aviation engineer Dr. Otto Steinitz built the propeller car called Dringos, which however, only reached a top speed of 60 km per hour. Two years later, Soviet engineer Valerian Abakovsky constructed another propeller car. Although it was significantly faster at 140 km per hour, it crashed during a test drive and tragically killed its creator, among others. The principle of the aero wagon was also utilized by the German engineer Franz Kruckenberg. In addition to the propeller drive, he was also inspired by the airships that were highly admired at the time, which due to their aerodynamic shape had less air resistance. This led him to the idea of designing a vehicle for the rail that would retain the streamlined shape of the Zeppelins. The Schienen Zeppelin was born. The rail car was built at the beginning of 1930 in the Hanover Leinhausen works of the German Imperial Railway Company. The work was completed by autumn of the same year. The Schienen Zeppelin was 25.85 meters long and had a wheelbase of 19.6 meters. The use of aluminum frames and stringers covered with sailcloth as the vehicle's exterior enabled a low empty weight of only 18.6 tons. A two or four blade propeller made of ash wood was driven by a 12-cylinder BMW aircraft engine with a power of 600 horsepower located at the rear. The two-blade propeller was mostly used as it seemed more suitable for higher speeds. For the 1930 trips with the four-blade propeller, 60 liters of fuel were needed for every 100 kilometers. The interior of the vehicle was kept very simple. In addition to very spartan shelves and seats, the holes in the ceiling were used to ventilate the space. In September 1930, the engine was started for the first time, followed by test drives on the company premises. Just a few days later, the vehicle, now streamlined, left the halls in Leinhausen for its first high-speed run. Due to its obvious similarity to airships, workers at the factory gave it the name Schienen Zeppelin, which translates to Railway Zeppelin. On the straight test track towards Bergwedel, the vehicle reached a top speed of 182 km per hour. However, due to its still very long braking distance of 2 km, the test had to be aborted before reaching the maximum possible speed. Just two days later, the first passengers were also able to experience the vehicle. After almost a year of testing, in June 1931, the Schienen Zeppelin set out on a great journey through Germany. The first destination was the city of Hamburg. However, there were also major delays here, as no insurance company was willing to insure a land vehicle with a propeller drive. Countless people flocked to Hamburg to see Hans Kruckenberg's vehicle. There, the train was prepared for the next day. A very special day, because the upcoming high-speed journey towards Berlin would go down in the history books. On June 21, 1931, the propeller car departed punctually from Hamburg-Bergdorf. The journey was followed with great excitement in Berlin. Radio and press were ready. The journey was followed by telegraph and transmitted to the whole world. The vehicle reached an average speed of 157 km per hour on the route. During the journey, the vehicle, which was driven by Kruckenberg himself, set a speed world record of 230.2 km per hour between Karstadt and Wittenberg, which stood for 24 years. The rail car still holds the land speed record for a petrol-powered rail vehicle. But despite all the enthusiasm, the vehicle also had some disadvantages. It could only be used as a single vehicle, which made it impossible to form a train. Additionally, due to its high speed, it was difficult to use the rail car effectively on routes with other trains. Also because of the fixed propeller used, it was not possible to drive the vehicle in reverse, which required the use of turntables or triangular tracks, as these were often not available. Very long turning maneuvers were sometimes necessary. The strong flow of the propeller and the resulting danger of stirred-up stones were also a safety concern for passengers on the platforms. 
Subsequently, the vehicle underwent several modifications. It was given a head with a two-axle bogey, and the driving force was now transmitted to the bogey axles. A tip was placed instead of the propeller. In 1934, the vehicle was sold to the German Reichsbahn for further test runs, which however were never carried out. The rail car stood in Berlin Tempelhof for almost five years until it was scrapped in 1939 due to its poor condition.